Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take an in-depth look at one of the largest American automobiles to come out of the early 70s, the 1973 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. And this is going to be a full in-depth tour of the Brougham. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, and show you a bunch of the features on the interior as well as exterior. And today, I'm at Street Side Classics in Charlotte, North Carolina. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start it up, let it run. It's a white exterior with a blue cloth and leather interior with vinyl accenting. Very quiet. Very smooth, effortless power steering. And a thin steering wheel underneath the cover. You can actually see that it is a um, modest wood grain lace wheel. Three spoke design. The vehicle also comes with GM's Turbo 400 three-speed automatic transmission with low gear selection. And, go ahead and cut on the headlamps. It does have power windows. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? The Cadillac Fleetwood Brome was the epitome of American luxury and styling back in the day featured the largest dimensions out of any American sedan pretty much, and commanded quite an impressive road presence just with its sheer massive size. In its third year of this body styling, featured quad chrome accented headlamps, recessed chrome grille, and the Cadillac emblem front and center with the polished aluminum trim going up down the middle of the hood. Large front bumper with integrated bumper guards, and you can just tell the massive profile from here with the raised center highlighting the front end of the grille. Body lines are pretty much as traditional as you can get. Solid, flat, with modest chrome accenting, the Fleetwood logos, aluminum accent and wheel wells, as well as a set of vintage white walls with the full standard Cadillac polished aluminum wheel covers giving a nice clean look to the side profile of the vehicle. Also, upon turning on the turn signals, you have a set of indicated side markers. This particular Fleetwood did come with the power brakes with front discs as well as rear drum units. Quite a unique extra styling cue on the rear quarter panel is that you can see the raised portion coming across the back almost forming a sphere. Finishing off the smooth lines with a pair of fender skirts as well as the integrated chrome rockers running across the bottom of the vehicle. The Fleetwood Brome measured 231.5 inches long with a width of 79.8 inches and a height of 55.5 inches, all with a total curb weight of around 5,102 pounds. And as we traipse on to the back of the vehicle, long flat deck lid, the full vinyl roof part of the Brome package, courtesy lights, or opera lamps if you will. All of the polished or anodized aluminum trim going around the windows, your broad hood, and all of your polished metal trim going across the window sills, creating a nice, clean, more glitzy look. Not to mention your manual exterior mirrors. Traditional vertical tail lamps in the rear with prominent chrome bumper. This particular one's also been affixed with the optional trailering package. These vehicles had quite an impressive towing capacity back in the day also. Fuel filler behind the license plate.
and we're going to pop the hood. It's got an extremely heavy hood to hoist. Oftentimes these two hands. <laughs> the Fleetwood Brome was powered by a massive 472 cubic inch V8 set to a Rochester four barrel carburetor. Now I mentioned in a previous video of a 1972 Corvette Stingray and I explained the differences in 1972 when the horsepower ratings changed from the SAE gross to SAE net horsepower due to economy, insurance, and other reasons. So basically, what the cars were rated from the factory in a certain way were different from what they actually ran. Just going over it real quick, gross horsepower basically takes the engine out of the vehicle without any of the accessory att accessories attached to it and measures horsepower that way. But everyone knows when you put it in the vehicle and hook all the accessories up to it, it takes away from the power of the engine itself. So it's not true to the exact measures that you saw outside the vehicle. So as far as the gross horsepower rating for the Fleetwood, produced around 345 horsepower at 4400 RPM, and 500 foot-pounds of torque at 2,800 RPM. Then you relate that to the net horsepower, which drops to around 220 at 3,800, and 380 foot-pounds of torque at 2,400 RPM. So just you can see some of the differences in it. Nothing mechanically in the engine changes whatsoever in that aspect, but it is just an absolutely massive engine bay. Several strut braces, cross members going across. And that massive engine propels the Fleetwood 0 to 60 ton of around 10.1 seconds with a quarter mile time of 17.4 seconds at 80 miles an hour. Also at a top speed of an estimated 118 miles an hour. Also at a 27 gallon fuel tank running on regular and leaded gas that achieved a miles per gallon rating of an estimated 9 city 12 highway. Absolutely legendary. The interior of the Brome was as posh as you can imagine back in the day. Features stylus, pillarless windows, give a nice seamless look to the vehicle. Full padded vinyl trim going across the tops of the door panel with your faux wood grain accenting, a key styling feature throughout the vehicle. Lower carpeted panels and courtesy lights, all padded here with chrome trim. Your power locks, power windows, window lockout, manual mirror, and your power wiper control is also located on the door. Some of the design features in the Fleetwood are also very ornate, such as these decorative patterns on the door here. The seats for power tilt sliding with power height adjustment all located down here. You also have a set of deluxe retractable seat belts. An immense amount of comfort with its pillow style design, very soft contour, pretty much fit any body. Polished aluminum entry guards. The steering wheel is manually tilting, manual telescoping with the unique curvaceous style to the speedometer here. You can kind of see how it rounds and kind of surrounds the driver and keeping all the controls focused. Those have aluminum accented pedals. And we're going to go ahead and see how she sounds. Got a little bit of a pulley squeak. Overall, it's a rather quiet V8. You can definitely feel the torque rocking the vehicle back and forth, but it doesn't really let out a real pronounced burble or anything like that. It's very controlled sounding.
Then shut her up. Very quick windows. The vehicle does come with an AM FM radio with 8 track player located behind the faceplate. Upon activation of the radio, your antenna will pop up slightly. And for better reception, you can manually activate the switch here to raise the antenna all the way. And you'd be surprised at how good the audio quality really sounds in the vehicle. Sort of like a primitive version of surround sound, if you will. Long, expansive dash overlooking that broad hood and those little indicators. You also have your rear defrost activation here. Large, easy to read speedometer cluster. Your climate control is located off to the left with your different zones and defrost as well as temperature adjustment. The lights are actually auto dimming also. So when you have people coming up and you don't, you forget to turn down your high beams, it'll actually detect it wherever you set it either far, way, um, max, and the such, so it'll automatically dim them down for you. The dimmer switch for the high beam is located right below the parking brake. The vehicle also does come equipped with the cruise control. Lighter and ashtray. And your center armrest. This is a six passenger vehicle after all. Cloth and vinyl visors. Alrighty. We're gonna shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. The back door is also our pillarless. Continuing the seamless lines from the front to the back. Same door treatment. Lighter and ash. That goes the same for both the back doors. And the back seat has pretty much the most amount of room that you could find in an American luxury sedan back in the day. Beautifully styled bench seat, the aluminum entry guard, as well as a set of foot rests on the back of each seat. They're extremely plush, basically just fall into them. It's an amazing amount of interior space. This little indicator up here is whenever you put your brakes on, a little light shows up letting you know that it's depressed as you're driving back. Interior accent lighting, reading lamps. Phenomenal. And let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Also practically one of the largest trunks in the business. No matter what you haul, this vehicle can take it. And I believe it's around 19.27 cubic feet of cargo space. The trunk also has an automatic pull-down feature, so you don't have to slam it down. Just bring it down slowly till it hits the catch and it'll automatically bring it down to the vehicle and give it a nice tight seal. The doors are quite heavy too, I might add. Integrated light in the passenger door. 
as well as the same power adjustments for the passenger seat that you find on the drivers. Lower storage pocket down below. You have an analog clock on this side with some similar ornate designs to the doors, as well as all the books. Beautiful classic. Backs from Cadillacs or true rear wheel drive land barges. <laughs> Definitely unique and quite neat to see today. A classic in Cadillac history books. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the 1973 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.